Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I am super excited to continue our Material Matters mini-series with a discussion of wound roll diameter. Why, you say? Because diameter is widely reported in commercial transactions related to packaging, storage, and transportation machinery. Continuous diameter readout is essential for the control of many winding and unwinding operations. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. The source of roll diameter specification often begins with the tension of wanting large rolls and not wanting large rolls. Specifically, you or your customer may want large rolls because that reduces the percentage of waste that may be seen at the top and or bottom of the rolls. Furthermore, it can increase system efficiency with fewer roll changes. However, few people want rolls that are 10 feet in diameter and no one wants rolls that are 100 feet in diameter. The reason is equipment limits. Winders, unwinds, transportation, and storage all have physical roll size and or roll weight limitations. The smallest roll diameter, length, weight, uh, capacity of any segment of the route will dictate maximum roll size and that may be very expensive to change. Another reason that is no less important for some products is the damage that can occur at the ID or the OD simply due to the roll weight on cores during winding and unwinding and the nip pressure due to roll weight on some types of winders. We cover these weight-induced defects and the underlying physics in great detail in the advanced winding section of my award-winning and trademarked Web 101 class. For these reasons and others, roll diameter is very commonly specified in contracts in commerce. So, if roll diameter is important, roll diameter should be measured and we will discuss the methods in just a couple of slides. There are two common commercial practices. In the paper industry, it is common to wind to diameter, report length, and sell by weight. In contrast, the converting industry tends to wind to diameter or length, sell by length, and report weight. Note that diameter is at least reported if not specified in both common practices. There are even more reasons to measure roll diameter. One is to improve unwind tension control by employing inertia compensation. This feed-forward tool is essential for good tension control on elements ranging from the simple single caliper air brake to AC vector motors and all the way to servo drives. The how and why of drives is covered in great detail in my Web 101 class as well as an entire chapter in my newest book. Next. It is super, super wasteful to run material off the car and then have to rethread the machine. Almost as bad is to have an operator sit and watch the unwind and start the slowdown or start a flying splice cycle. It is nothing short of a waste of human life when a simple unwind diameter sensor can do even better. There are even more reasons to have diameter sensors on the winder. First, most modern winders are able to program curves or taper in the TNTs as a function of diameter. Again, we cover the reason for curves and taper in our Web 101 class, and thus there's no need to do that here. 
wound roll diameter sensors like the unwind can be used to assist or control the stopping of a winder. This can even improve safety because roll, running a roll too big on some winders can cause material waste and even possibly damage the winding machine. Now for the house. There are at least a half a dozen common ways to continuously measure roll diameter, from a simple pointer on a scale all the way up to an LBDT embedded in a cylinder that can measure diameters to less than the thickness of one wrap or the thickness of a human hair. We covered those in great detail and the pros and cons of each in our advanced winding class. The only one I will highlight here, the gold standard measure, which is the dual tack method. This can be more accurate than the thickness of one wrap or the thickness of a human hair. It is also bulletproof reliable. It is also in many cases low or zero cost at least as far as the equipment is concerned. If you already have a modern motor connected to a winder or unwind, you already have what you need to compute diameters because the master speed reference and computer PLC or drive is a given. My first winder book details the equations and lists these and other sensors. Again, recall from our last clip, Web 201.69F, how it can be very, very risky to specify both diameter and length at the same time. The reasons are techy and will not be detailed here because they are covered elsewhere. There are at least three places where you will find a detailed discussion of wound roll diameter and diameter sensors. The first is my very first book, The Mechanics of Winding, published way back in 1994. It is still in print and has many pages of details on diameter and length measurement and related concerns. The next is my must-have 750-page web handling handbook. There you will find an entire chapter on drive control as well as more on winder and unwind motor sizing in the appendix. Then, of course, is my award-winning and trademarked Web 101 class that has been taken by about 5,000 people just like you. Here you will learn about webs, web handling, winding, and some converting operations in addition to wound roll diameter measurements and concerns. Thank you so very much for joining me in this Material Matters series. Stay tuned for the next clip where we will return to test lab measurements. The first in this section will be how to measure the web's tensile strength and why we would want to. If you have a topic you would like to hear about, let me know in the comments section below. If you have found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting the work of this channel using the Patreon link below. See you next time!